So now if you look at the physical space and look at the behavior of this equation, okay, let, let's say I have an initial condition here and I'm looking for a solution on this domain. So if I actually perturb the initial condition a little bit, right, if I perturb the initial condition a little bit at one physical point at one particular x or very small region in the physical domain. How, where would you expect the solution to be different? It will be after that point. It will be after the point for sure, right? But would the influence be felt everywhere or be felt in a narrow region that spreads at a fixed speed? Yes? It will be locally, that's your answer, yes? It'll be everywhere, and any, okay, so, yes? It'll ripple and settle out. All right, any other answers? Speed of kappa, yes? So you can decompose it to many Fourier components, so I'd expect it's felt everywhere, because you have now introduced many Fourier components, which could be affecting all of them simultaneously. Right, I like your answer. So, so the reason is the following. We are looking at a linear equation, right? So for a linear equation, analyzing the effect of a perturbation is the same as, if you use the principle of superposition, is the same as analyzing the effect of its own solution where the initial condition is just this perturbation. So we are effectively looking at the solution of the heat equation where the initial condition is zero everywhere except for at one, uh, it's very hard to draw that, at one very small space, all right? So the solution is going to be like that, right? So it'll, it'll spread out. So, it, so first of all, it looks like it's pretty local, right? The effect is, is pretty local. But that's actually a... Uh, um, not exactly true mathematically. The reason is the following. If you decompose that very sharp function, okay, so if you decompose, uh, okay, so if you are able to decompose a, almost a delta function in Fourier series, what will be the Fourier series look like? It's constant, right? So, so if you transform a delta function to a Fourier series, the Fourier coefficient is going to be as large for larger case, right? Okay, so basically you have all frequency components, and uh, all the frequency components, they decay at different rates. So what, what, you, what you are seeing is that after the large coefficients decay, you are no longer have a delta function. You have is something that almost looks like a Gaussian. So, so instead of a delta function, you have a Gaussian, and then a larger, a larger and larger Gaussian. So, so this effect is felt instantaneously everywhere, except for the further, the further away it is from this initial perturbation, the smaller the effect is. But the effect is going to be non-zero everywhere. So, this is the common feature of all parabolic equations. The domain of influence of a perturbation here, it's not going to spread out at finite speed. It's going to be everywhere after the perturbation. So domain of influence. Okay, so domain of influence is when you change a, when you put a perturbation in the equation, where that perturbation is going to change the solution. Okay, the domain of influence of, for parabolic equations is all the spatial locations after the perturbation. 